Good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, call the Berlin uh, Select Board to order, a meeting to order, a special meeting on Monday, January the 22nd, 2024. With us tonight, to my left, is Flo Smith, Joe Staub, to my right, Callie Streeter, and Tor Nelson is on Zoom. Uh, with us also are Tom Bodowski, uh, zoning administrator, and Callie Streeter, town treasurer. Callie got named twice. <laughs> What's that? Callie got named twice. Yeah. Carla Carl and the Weasel. Weasel. <laughs> yeah, <I'm out. laughs> Callie's looking at me like. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Oh, well. It's okay, Brad. Yeah. I've had a long day, too. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of it's cakes. It's that kind yeah. of a day. It really I've is. I've had meetings, literally. I just got off one and came. I mean, it's just been crazy. I don't know why we have meetings on Monday. <laughs> Um, work? Uh, additions or changes to the agenda tour? Uh, none. Uh, public comment? <coughs> Hearing none. Um, annual report? Okay, I uh, sent out the draft of the uh, annual report for the select board. Uh, no changes were made to it from uh, last week's meeting. And I've not received any feedback on it. Uh, so if it's okay with you, I will uh, send to the town clerk's office. I'll just add for when I printed it out, the, the page cut off two of the select board names, so they'll, they'll be on the report. Okay. I make the motion to approve the select board report with those changes um, just mentioned. A second. Any discussion? Hearing hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, fiscal year 25 budget review and possible adoption. So Tor. Yeah. <coughs> The, the change in the budget is 14%? That's correct. Now, yeah. uh, um, taking a look at some of the tax rate implications. Right now, our tax rate is 0. 0.7574 for the current year. Uh, if we take this budget as we currently have now and based on the current grand list, which I, I think is going to be a little bit overstated, the uh, mobile homes have not been removed yet. And our anticipated revenues, uh, that tax rate will come in at a 0.87. To five, which is quite a bit of an increase. Uh, on a $250,000 home, our current tax rate is $1,893. Uh, that would go up to $2,181. Which is, which is quite a bit of an increase. Um, now, I sent you a spreadsheet uh, this morning. Uh, it, it, it's actually a compilation of several spreadsheets that Diane had been working on before she left. Um, and one of the very first tabs is the reservation history. Yeah. Um, and so we do have $305,000 reserved for highway equipment, uh, of which we're looking in the budget for $253,000 for uh, a new loader. And we have $56,000 reserved for a, from ARPA for a new uh, police cruiser. 
uh, so if we add those two items in, uh, our tax rate drops to 0.8146, or uh, comes out to be $2,036 on a $250,000 home. Percentage? Now, What's you got? A, you have a percentage on that one? You have you said the percentage on the first one? I thought was fourteen. I do not. Well, the the there's no. It's still the fourteen percent increase in the budget. It's just the non-property tax revenues affecting the tax rate. So we're not actually cutting from the budget yet. Um, also, we have about 45000 left in unallocated ARPA funds. If we were to apply that to the tax rate, in addition to the other reserved funds, it'll drop the tax rate to 0.80. Six two, which comes out to two thousand fifteen dollars on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Now, uh, Tom printed out for you uh, the current um, budget draft. Can I ask a question? Sure. So, so I'm assuming, so that must mean the ARPA funds, there's no restrictions? Or would it be applied to? Basically for this year, and this is the last year we can do it, we can, we can apply the ARPA funds directly to the revenue side of the budget. Okay. Um, so looking at the budget, um, I've, I've, like I said, I you know figuring it all along a three percent uh, raise for staff. Um, I've not really heard any feedback on that. Does anybody have want to weigh in on that? Increase it, decrease it. How would it impact the budget? As we've just discussed, if we were to lower it to 2% as opposed to 3 have you looked at that? Um, like, just checked going a little higher or lower or 2, 2.5 versus 3? That I do not have available quite yet. Well, and you did mention last time, I think, that cost of living was 3.7 or somewhere in that vicinity? Uh, 3.5. Or for what I remember. I think a 1% difference in your wages aren't going to make any significant change here. I, I, in, in his, historically, I don't think they really have, correct? No. Sure. Except for unhappy campers. <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah. I mean, I think the three is a good compromise between what, you know. I mean, I know you mentioned that we want to increase it to the, I think to the, to match the cost of living is what I heard you say last time. But. It seems. That, that's an op, you know, that's an option. I don't, I don't want to be seen as, you know, pushing this through. Uh, I, I want, you know, definitely want your feedback on this. Well, tour. I mean, if you're if the if the cost of living assessment is uh, is three point four and we're offering three, I think um, I think that's fair enough. Um, does Does anybody feel different? 
No, I was just curious how it would have changed percentages, basically, was my reasoning for the question. Sure. I mean, I don't know what total wages are, but if you're to look at total wages, 0.04% isn't that, can't be that much of it. I think you're going to have to look some elsewhere, not the wages. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I mean, right now we we have a we have a, a good working crew up here, and I'd hate to I'd hate to see it change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I concur. I agree. You know, I don't have any problem with the staff, and I'm very fortunate. Feel very fortunate, etc. I just was curious how it would change the percentages. Is all. But we definitely have to look at other things. There's no doubt about that. It was just this was the discussion at hand. Right. Well, that's where I wanted to start with. I mean, you know, wages absolutely is a large part of our um, of our budget. But at the same time, of course, the, I'm, and I, let me rephrase this here. I'm talking about the non-union budget. Uh, right. Union right. Is, absolutely. So I'm I'm only talking non-union budget here. And can you just go over the reserve piece? Or did you already, it, it seemed as though there was gonna be money added to the reserves, is that true? Uh, money, if I understand correctly, money taken out of reserves. Oh. So we have, and, and we'll get into more in a little bit, but we do have, uh, last year we reserved, or you reserved, Three hundred five thousand for highway equipment. Oh, that. Um, I I don't know if Brad or Flo can elaborate on that at all. But you know of that, um, you know, use two hundred fifty three thousand for the for the loader. I guess I was talking about carryover funds and the emergency fund. It was did what you sent today talk about adding money to that or or. Forgive no. me. No. <laughs> no. No, I'm no not, apology necessary. <laughs> I'm it's not a up question. to speed on all this, but we talked about buying it down with some of that money if there was more than a certain amount. I just was curious where that. And I don't think there's more that, there's not. than that in there. So I asked mm -hmm. Diane how to pull it up, pulled it up. It said we had like 820000 on that list and that did not seem right but she also said to email the auditors because they haven't done their final changes yet so i did email them and ask them what that number was okay and they have not got back to me i checked my email before i came in thank you so but it's that seemed very high but i think a lot of that is also this page as well mixed in because when I pulled it up, there was all of these in there as well. So, okay. keep in mind that the, you know, the budget as voted on is only the expenses um, by the, you know, by the voters. Uh, the use of the reserve funds, um, you know, gets figured in at the time, you know, setting the tax rate. Yeah, correct. But I, but I think explaining that at the pre-town meeting is, you know, critical to them understanding, yes, this is a 14% increase, but the, the impact on the tax rate is XYZ, right? I mean, that's... Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. Yep. 100% correct. Right. You see, I'm trying to think how to, how to say this. The undesignated or the surplus is you can hold some in reserve. The rest of it is the taxpayers' money, and and it should go back. Or that's why you buy down the budget, right. but you're not really giving anything back. All you're doing is cutting down their taxes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way to explain it. So according to Cali, we have somewhere if it's not eight hundred and something thousand, and we we would have that. We could bring it down to 500 because that was a suggested amount 
Yeah. So we have three hundred and some odd thousand dollars to well, possibly. Yeah. Well, since adjust since that. I've been on the board, we've always carried around half a million in the in the undesignated reserves. Yeah. And um, I think in twenty twenty they we used it to pay off the greater early. So it got down around three hundred thousand. And I haven't really kept track of it and should have, but it's um, I think eight hundred thousand I can see that I think. This designated reserve and undesignated reserve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It sounds approximately <clears throat> correct to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And going back to what Carla said about letting at the pre-town meeting, letting letting the the town know what it is, and that we actually are using our reserves, because it's almost if they don't understand that, at some point that's going to catch up with us. We're not going to have those reserves. Yeah. And next thing you know, your fourteen percent is more like eighteen yeah. percent, or whatever yeah. that might be. Yeah. That's scary. Well, and, and keep and keep in mind that. You know, using it this year, using the designated reserves this year, means it's not available for future. Right. But the the state has always, or we have always carried about a, a half million because it's supposed to be a certain percent of the budget. And if you really looked at it, I think the actual number would be somewhere around three hundred and fifty thousand. We've always carried about a half a million, mm -hmm. so that gave you that between the three hundred fifty thousand and whatever the reserve actually was. That was what we used for the uh, to buy down the tax rates. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get rid of that. We always had something in the in the undesignated. But to get the Joe's point, wouldn't you have to have? sort of a definitive number when you go to town meeting and say it's going to be X amount of dollars. Yeah. So that's what you have, that's what the decision yeah. process is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so to shift the discussion a little bit, um, you, know, the, you know, the budget you have in front of you I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but are you looking to increase any of these areas? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Tori, you can, you can be pretty confident that that's not the case. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> then you just start looking. Fire department, we have to increase no. the fire department. No, I'm not even, uh, <laughs> different hat. What I am going to say, and, and I, I, it's not going to be. I know Brad's thinking of maybe increasing the select board pay for himself. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm putting words in mouth there, but um, um, I've said this for a couple of years: is you, I think the town of Berlin should really be looking at a back road or dirt road rehabilitation program, whatever that is, and it can't be just dirt on the road, okay? And a culvert when failed. Well, I'm going to tell you your back roads is probably one of the biggest assets, sorry Tom, in the town of Berlin. <laughs> if you look at the, the town residents and, and, and how many live on back roads. <laughs> well, so anyway, that. going back to increasing, that's a line item that we don't have. But I'm saying this, so at some point we're going to be thinking about that. But I think having a capital budget for, you know, will help with uh, so that when something comes up, you know, plan re re replacement of culverts versus crises when you spend way more money on it because right. so I think that will make a big difference and hopefully down the road that will help to be able to address your concern, I think. Well, I think what you could. I, don't, I totally agree with Joe on this and, and Tom and I, we, we've talked quite a few times on this. I mean, that's one of my, uh, uh, I don't say pet projects, um, but you know, we do need to get a longer term plan for the road, you know, a five year road plan. Um, I, you know, I know, um, you know, some residents have been calling for it for years and I totally agree with them on this. And we did take a major step last week on this. I did issue an RFP 
uh, for development of a asset capital improvement plan to start looking at the roads, the culverts, the bridges, um, start doing this in, in conjunction with hopefully the revenue we received from the local options tax on how to plan ahead for these expenses. Yeah. Um, you know, prop, I don't say we're not properly expending them, but property plan longer term to expend, you know, these revenues and, uh, you know, get the best deal for the town that we can. Yeah, good tour, thanks. But getting back to the question, where do we cut? <laughs> Do, has Tim said how 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 the uh, blacktop roads are? Well, I know um, we do still have the contract out on Airport Road. Yeah. Um, that was a state grant that the uh, vendor was not able to get to this fall, and we're first on the list to have that paved this spring. So that will still come out of the fiscal year 24 budget. Uh, we deferred paving on, is it Pine Hill Road last summer? Pine Hill Drive, yeah. Um, which was 100,000. Um, so we do, you know, so that's probably our first priority this year. Uh, you know, this year, meaning fiscal year 25, is to plan on paving that. Um, the asphalt budget is level funded 160000 from the current year to next year. Now, if you know, with all the other work we're doing on the roads with uh, flood damage and everything, this this is a discretionary area that we have some flexibility in. Um, my concern is that you know we we get into the mindset we've always had and which gets us in trouble is we just keep deferring and keep deferring and then it becomes a crisis. Do you know which road uh, Tim was expecting to pave uh, this coming year? Uh, I, well, like I said, the carryover from Pine Hill from last, from, from this current year and I've been hearing a lot about Scott Hill. Yes. I know some work had been done on Scott Hill, but I hear there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah. Now, you know, another option is, um, you know, I've got 400000 baked in for the unreimbursed uh, local match of the FEMA flood dam. Um, you know, keep in mind this number is, you know, a very rough estimate, but there could be opportunities to spread this over, you know, several years with, uh, with bonding. I don't necessarily like that idea, but I'm not opposed to it. Keep in mind that the public's work is talking about Scott Hill Road. Uh, tearing that up so you, you may want to look at that schedule and make sure that we don't pave it and then tear it up within two years so um, just, yeah just to pave it again yeah, yeah. right pave it poorly yeah yeah mm -hmm. Good point 
Yeah. That maybe well, there's a way the select board could have those conversations with the uh, public work board because that paving is baked into that into that project that may alleviate the select board from having to put all that money in the Scott Hill Road. Now, would Scott Hill Road need any any uh, patching in the meantime, or? I can only you assume I, so, right? I would assume so. It sounds to be in pretty rough shape. Mm -hmm. But I don't I know that it can last two years. I mean, that's what they did on Scott Hill anyway, is that short stretch going up the hill. That's, that's a patch job. Yeah. And I'm sure that didn't came with a price, but that wasn't too awful expensive, I'm sure. Well, I was just thinking, like if Tom is saying they're going to take and uh, uh, dig the road up anyway, I'd hate to put any money into it to have it torn up. Right. Well, that patch job they put on, on the hill, it's not going to last. If it goes two years, I'd be really surprised. Yeah, I'd be surprised if the Pugs Work Board got to Scott Hill Road within three years. I just I can't see it get yeah, done okay. within three years. The the pit, you mean the re redoing it? Or re or the, the actual board? putting putting the pipe in the ground. There's a lot of work yet to do. On is it. that going down the edge or is it going down the roadway? You're not yeah. really sure, but yeah. there's yeah. road work to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's and there's paving money baked into that budget. To, uh, so I, the assumption was that it's going down a paved section of the road. So it's not on, they baked in a pretty good amount of dollars into that. So what's I, I, I can't put my head around this because I don't know what the diff, what the cost of maintaining it until then versus the cost of paving it is. So I don't know how to make it how to even analyze this situation. It's a million dollars a mile, right, for paving? Probably more than that now. So it's got to be less to keep it up between now and then than it is to pave it and then rip it up and repave it. I would assume. I would think so, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know definitively what that. That is <clears throat> number wide. And if you don't pave that, does that mean you would do a different road? I mean, I don't know what this paving program is, but would you do a different road or would we just put it off? Well, to take and get the budget down, you'd have to put it off. Yeah, that, well, that was my thought, but yeah. I mean, I, that kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> But I was just trying to, you know, come up with ways to, to uh, take and narrow the budget down a little bit. But I hate to take and do it at the, at, I hate to be, you know, do it today and then have it cost me down the road. Yeah. Well, well, the thing, I mean, I guess I struggle because, you know, first of all, I don't know the priorities at this point. Being new, but I mean. If you're looking for a certain dollar amount, you know, nickel and diming it isn't going to get there, right? No, it's got to no, be something no. fairly significant to right. make an impact. Well, the paving budget is. Yeah, <laughs> so. Right. But at the same time, I mean, it doesn't do any good to take and let the roads to, uh, go. Uh, that's just, that's just false. Uh, well, no, I mean, it'd have to be maintained, obviously. Yeah, uh, false you know. economy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Dor, how much of this increase in the in the budget is inflationary? We have no control over that. Uh, I would have to. I, I know, like the insurances went up quite a bit, and and we've talked about this at, at previous meetings. Um, you know, our insurance rates from the leak have gone up. By, I think about ten percent or so. Of course figuring in you know a 10 percent increase in health insurance rate uh that seems to be the standard rate for several years now um and, and no relief seems to be coming in in sight uh, you know figuring in increases in 
fuel and utilities and everything like that. So, um, you know, things are getting more expensive and, and, um, you know, we have to plan for it. Now, you know, one thing we talked about last week was for the planning commission, an increase in the consultant fees, uh, to $50,000. Um, Carla, did you get a chance to talk to Tom about this or? Well, Tom's here. Oh, wait, just... <laughs> I did, but since he's here, uh... I, I, my personal opinion is the planning commission drives a lot of what's going on in this community. It's it's uh, adding to the grand list. I think out more than any other entity in the town. Uh, I think they they've proven their 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 metal. Uh, they've got 3.8 acres over, you know, at the at the new town center, which is, you know, that's going to be a couple several million dollar project when it's all said and done. Uh, and and if we do it right, that'll add grand list value. Uh, to me, ten thousand dollars, and there's uh, there seems to be other other uh, buckets of of. Um, uh, uh, Monies that spend it significantly more than ten thousand uh, dollars, and I, I, I think the planning commission has has added value to it. But again, it's a select board decision. If you think ten thousand dollars is going to be a nut, then then do it. But uh, again, I think the, the planning commission, along with the recreation commission, are the ones that are driving the growth in this town right now. Well, my question is: Is, is there a specific project? uh that the planning commission will be using this money for or is it just something to wait and see the, the planning commission with the recreation commission has has several projects this ice rink project out here is, would require some match the 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 the, the, the doing that vine street uh, municipal park up there that's going to require some match um this what what has proved to work is that if you are in effect shovel ready, and, and part of that is having bond votes to that end, uh, you you become el uh, eligible for more grant opportunities, and, and um, so having these funds at, at the ready at the reserve, I think affords this community the ability to to grow uh, both. In its, in its tax base and its livability. And we did get money to help with the improvement at the gateway, right? We did. Yeah, we so, did. you know, that will open the door, I think, for more possibilities over there uh, with the path in yeah. terms of grant funding. So I do agree that, um, I mean, obviously, I've, you know, you may think I'm biased, but um, there, I think there's, there's a lot of potential based on what's happened over the last year where we didn't receive a lot of grants now i think we might be better more competitive and there are several projects that add value to the grant list uh, we're going to be here something later today the the uh, um, planning mission i think is having a, a, a program this coming wednesday developers coming in uh, do we bake any of this into into that would be FY26 budget uh, if anything came to fruition there. Is that correct, Tor? As far I'm not following the top. Like if if, this, if a project starts, let's just say oh, oh, let's just say the Starbucks project starts over at, at on Berlin Common, and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's halfway through uh, construction in calendar year. 24. That, I believe, will be assessed at a higher rate than than um, it is today. Does that add Does that add any significant value? Do, do we as Do we, we as a community look at those projects and and say that that this project is going to be 10 percent complete, 40 percent complete, 80 percent complete by the next go round and we could then point to 
our constituents, like we, we're going to point to them with, this res, with these dollars that are in reserve, right? We, we could say um, uh, uh, at town meeting, but these are the projects that are in the work. We anticipate this amount of, of grand list value added to this within the next year. And um, we, we understand it's X percent now. And, and and just state that these projects will make the next cycle better. Do we ever do we ever look look at that? Does that get baked into 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 the the formula? Well, I don't know that there's any way to bake it into the formula, but it is part of the you know the the vision for the town and where we want to eventually end up with the town um uh, you know i think i think the problem is that we're asking the voters to approve this very short term you know this one year budget uh you know very finite amount of budget and you know they're looking at what's the impact on me you know, as as a property tax payer, uh, then hearing the same things coming out of the schools and everything else, where they're talking, you know, twenty twenty five percent increase in their budgets. Uh, you know, that's uh, I I think that's where the disconnect between the you know the two thoughts come in. But but I think Tom, are you suggesting that we? Uh, present, calculate what that would add to the grand list and how that would impact taxes. On the go forward. On the go forward. Yes. Which I think is not a bad idea. That gets a little touchy though, because those values are put in as of April 1st. No, but I mean, just hypothetically. Right, but they're in there. So if you make changes three times between no. April 1st no, no, we're not and no, 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 no. that. We're just saying, though. in theory, if you add a million dollars worth of value because of Starbucks, this is how it impacts the the grand list and the that's what you know, yeah. just some hypotheticals not i don't mean you actually put it in your system yeah but even looking at that so if they're you know halfway done in june but then so you look at that in june but they're going to be complete by you know april 20 or march 20th so it's it it's going to change in that piece so it would be but, very rough but you're looking at it very very technically yeah. and i think we're talking just like yeah. From what a high level, what would what what could the town? What's the, the town can what's the anticipated? The anticipated yeah. increase in the town in yeah. the grand list, and and I understand. I don't know, I don't begin to know what you're how you do it. how you do it. So I don't even know what you just said, but yeah. but the I concern I have the concern yeah. I have with that is um you know but you know you know we we sell this and then something happens. And Starbucks doesn't come, or one of the other projects on the lots don't come, or something, and those, you know, never comes to realization. And now, you know, while well, you sold us this, but it didn't happen. <clears throat> I, I think, I think, it, I think, a potential for some, you know, ill will. Yeah. You know, being there. I, so, I, I, I like dealing more with the concrete and that what we know and what we control. These numbers and the budget we can control. And again, I, I would only use project projects that have come in for a zoning permit. You know, not, not something that's more nebulous. That okay, yeah, this is a good project that we've heard about. I, I would, I would just use actual applications people have spent time and engineering on to to present to the development review board. Um, and I think you're going to see a good bit of this in the next. Three or four months. I mean, people are going to be dedicated to their projects. Okay, well, I don't know where to go, so I'm going to let you experience people. <laughs> <laughs> Tour, I have a question on, on the flood work. Yes. So I'm going to say do you have an idea of how many different types of smaller projects to, to kind of clean it all up? That would be some more ditching, possible new culverts, and stone lining these ditches that we haven't done yet. 
we, we, we have some of these projects that's going to carry us through um, next summer, right? Most of that has been completed. Uh, this 400000 is just for the Payne Turnpike, um, Richardson Road, uh, Darling Road, and a culvert on Junction Road. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, the, the four major, what, what FEMA calls Cat C standalone project. Um, all the other work is basically completed. I mean, there's still some graveling that needs to be done in the spring and, and things like that. Um, but uh, for the most part, everything else has been, com you know, completed. Uh, now, you know, the, the next thing is taking a look at culverts and not the culverts that were damaged, but any remaining undersized culverts, looking at the state for mitigation funding, you know, can we take some proactive steps uh, to keep this keep these culverts from failing in the future? You know, that's additional pot of money from, from FEMA and from the state, which again requires, you know, a local match, but we're not at that point in time yet. But with a good capital improvement plan, that's something we can start planning for. And the only reason I ask is because if our focus was maybe still on some of these back roads, and we're looking at $160,000 on a paving program, which we only used near about half of last year, and that's because we're, we're on the back roads all last year. Um, what if we cut that paving about half? That would, that would, well, that would get us, that would not be able to do Pine Hill. We still want to do Pine Hill. No, just th that, that, that would give us enough money to do some some leveling or patchwork only. Correct. I get it. I, get it. You know, the, the, I think the two projects that they might have done for paving that was uh, substantial was that Scott Hill and then Payne Turnpike North at the intersection of 62. That's correct. And you got to realize that, you know, that section right there at 62 and Payne Turnpike North was done in the evening. So that comes with a little added cost as well when they're paving at night. Um, There's also savings from traffic control. Too, so, yeah. But I wouldn't eliminate the ability to do some of these um, smaller paving projects and I and I think you're gonna have do we have some left over from the flood that we have patched but I mean truly those patch jobs are, are temporary um. well also keep in mind we reserved for you reserved 60,000 and asphalt and marking last year, which would be available. So if we cut what was budgeted, 160, right? Yeah. Correct. And, and so we, we, if we cut it in half, that gives us 80 plus the 60, is that what you're telling me? Take it down to 80? Well, if we cut the 160 to eight in half, Okay. And then you said we had sixty thousand in reserve for paving. Uh, Is that what you just said? A bit ago? 60, correct. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Sixty. Oh, Sixty. Six zero. Okay. So now we're back up to one hundred and twenty thousand of paving, right? Wow. Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. One hundred and forty. We're nearly back up to the budget. Okay. I like that. Well, thinking thinking of it that way, knowing the whole story, I'm saying, okay, we could cut it more in half. <laughs> I was that was in my brain too. But what's the nut? What what's the nut? What's the dollar number you're trying to get to? Is it fifty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars? So what's the what's, what's the nut for? Well, that's your decision. 
That's not my decision, but I mean. I mean, that's the board's decision. Well, I guess I'd like to know what, what brings it back down to the current uh, tax, the same tax rate. What, what you know, just, just for reference. You're talking about 10% of, of inflation, right? So we're looking at an increase of 4%. That's all you're looking at. Honestly, oh, oh, you mean realistically? Realistically, it's 4%. Now, try and sell that to the community it might be still a, a tough. Well, I, I think looking at it this way, if um, our current budget is just under four point one million dollars. Okay. Now, if you figure in a, let's just say we're going to increase everything by five percent, which is, you know, I don't want to say steep, but but much more doable than the fourteen percent. That would take us just under four point three million dollars okay. before we get into the. Before we get into the funny money of reserve funds and ARPA funds and things like that, we're at four point six seven six million dollars. So we're still looking, you know, three hundred thousand dollars higher above that five percent. I I'm that, not opposed I'm not opposed to the to the reserve funds and stuff, but you know, I think if we look at things as far as um, you know, overall impact and what people see when they go to the polls, um, I I I think that message gets lost on, and and they just see the increase in the budget. So you're, am I hearing that you think we should, that the 300,000, so you, we should cut, you think there should be something cut out as opposed to just using the reserve or, or counting the reserve? Is that what I'm hearing? Because they're going to see the actual budget, not the revenue side and how it's being reduced. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> um. Well, that, that's what I'm trying to prompt you for is, you know, what is the balance we want to go with? Okay. You know, cuts versus. Okay, gotcha. Funds and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I would like to see some cuts myself, but I am um, very, um, very much a tight wad when it comes to such things. Well, that's not a bad thing. Okay, so so to Joe's point, hundred thousand comes from could come from the the asphalt piece and still leave one hundred and twenty thousand. To start. To start. Yeah. Well, you're talking about somewhere about cutting three hundred thousand dollars. Instead of using or, or using well, or cutting 150 and uh, yeah some, right something in some that's what I was thinking year. yes so instead of cutting a three hundred thousand dollars let's just look at it fair a little easier and say let's see if we can cut 150 thousand and only use 150 thousand reserve let's look at it that way just to just to kind of start getting close to a number that's yeah reasonable. And I hear your point to her that 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 the the revenue is is lost on the constituents, but that that's then just a poor job of staff and the select board of getting the message out, right? So if if we put t some time and effort into explaining explaining that, that sh there sh there should be some value to that. I don't know how much has been done in the past, but there should be a concerted effort to do that. I 
mean, it might be too late for this, but it's probably too late to do one of those informational. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's too late for that. But, but again, we, we have a lot of interaction with the community, and, and, and it's, we could have, you know, four or five public forums. We can go to, the, to various locations Places, in yeah. town and in neighborhoods in town and have a community forum like we did with yeah. when we did the zoning. Yeah, you know? I like that. Yeah. And just go have your range. message that way, yeah. yeah. So to our we have basically yep. a six hundred thousand dollar increase in the budget. Is that right? Correct. Roadside mowing, what is that? Is that eight, ten foot swath? What, what, is it two passes? Two, two, two passes. Two passes. Where, where you can. Where you can. So, where you can is there's a lot of travel in between. So, there's a lot of where you can't. And mm -hmm. we're just driving that vehicle. And I'm not saying we, we, we contract this out. Yeah. Where maybe if your focus was on intersections and you know, they could focus on the intersections in one pass. And I'm not saying you're going to cut that in half. No. But you can cut a chunk of that out. But the, the trouble, what's, what's, paid, what's the roadside mowing, uh, $10,000? Well. <laughs> you got a bunch of the 12. It's 12. Yeah. But. No, it's not a one-stop shop here. <laughs> you know, I would just encourage you to come up with what the nut is and work towards the nut, right? Well, I would think, I mean, you, you're not going to be able to stay static. You're going to have to increase. I mean, just the, just the devaluation of the dollar proves that. Um, you're going to have to, I mean, for me, I'm looking, I would be looking at uh, an increase of uh, three to 400,000, which is 300 or 200. So, so that's that's what you're going for. There was a hundred thousand in paving, mm -hmm. right? so we're you're getting a third there. of the way there, right? Yeah. Cal, are you writing this down? <laughs> All right. Right. Okay. Yeah, and, and I mean, until we get the the uh, firm number on on the uh, undesignated, uh, if if the, if the, if if it's eight hundred thousand of undesignated. You might be able to take and get the three hundred thousand in right. one swoop. Mm -hmm. So, but until we get that number, we're kind of guessing. And I mean, if we can get the if we can get the three hundred thousand have it undesignated and still leave us with three hundred thousand in uh, undesignated for us for uh, emergencies, then. I'd be happy, but. So, so there's three buckets, right? There's Cuts. the general select board, there's the highway, and then there's the police. Yeah. Why shouldn't it be $100,000 from each one of those, and, and mm -hmm. there's your nut. You got 100 from the, from the, from the highway, come up with 100 from over there, and come up from 100 over here. I, seems to be fair. There's a difference between fair and right. Yeah. Fair doesn't always mean equal. Mm -hmm. No, I get that. Well, what did the police budget go up uh, last year? Fourteen, you said, Joe? I think it was fourteen percent. Well, it was so. Employee 24, it's 145, 1,456,612. 1.58. My math's not working. 
Uh, it's a little over 8%. Oh, eight. And, and I think the police is pretty, pretty lean the way it is. Probably a lot of that is wages. You don't really have much control over anyway because it's locked in. Mm -hmm. But the contract. Well, the, one of the things that always bother me with the police is so many expenses there that you can't really catch. Control. liability insurance. I mean, I think the only control really comes with the size of the force, right? Yeah. And that's not going to be changed at this meeting anyway. Um, so, yeah. One concern I have, and it's not derogatory by no means, it's just if you look at the actual FY 2023, the police overtime, is incredibly high and we understand that and we know that that there's the reason behind it but then when we look at um, the upcoming budget it's considerably less and that concerns me if we're really high now how are we going to be less than that going forward when really there's an that. increase in crime rate etc changes were they short staffed? Was that the result of the Short staffed. So yeah. you, you had multiple people at the academy. You True. had people out on leave. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that was the increase in the overtime. Right. Are they fully staffed now? Yeah. They are fully staffed now. And healthy. Mm -hmm. And healthy. I think it would be bad to go line by line certain areas, uh, you know, what you were indicating about going, you know, section by section per se. I don't think we necessarily need to do that, but maybe we should go down through and just take the time to say yay or nay to where each of these line items are and what we can derive from there. Or like you have said, you know, where's the nut? You know. Well, I'm wondering if we should take this home and uh, make our marks and comments on it, and then uh, next select board meeting we can go over it. Do you want to try to do another meeting this week, or because we do have to have it finalized by next Monday at the latest? I'm good with having another meeting. I think Brad's right. I think I feel like I'm, I mean. Would, would Thursday be enough time for everybody to? I think so. I, well, I, I think having the reserve number is going to be important for that meeting too. So as long as you think you can get that by then. That's wonderful. Thanks for thinking it's Thursday. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Thursday, all right? That's why I said Thursday. Yep. <laughs> it's fine for me as well. Yep. Okay, Thursday, well, Thursday at 6, does that work for everybody? Works for me. Thursday at noon. 
<laughs> okay. So, motion of table to Thursday. So moved. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're, we can move on to um, the executive session. Door. I move that we enter in. Uh, I move that we enter into executive session in accordance with one VSA three one three A two for discussion of real estate. Second. Any discussion? All those in oh. favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We are now in executive session. So there's no decision to be made from the executive session. Uh, so Tom. I'm going to attempt to do this. You, as you everybody know that uh, staff has been working on a media campaign for the local options tax. And we have a we have a video. I hope that we could show it. If you give me the ability to to show something on Zoom tour, uh, let me make you the host. Oh God! I love that technology. I know. He's a huge fan. <laughs> I understand where he's coming from. <laughs> so you should be the host now. Okay. Yeah. Go back in here into the Zoom. First time I loaded Zoom on my computer, the computer went through an update. It's like, why? <laughs> why at that moment, right? Yeah. yeah. Didn't, Zoom didn't load right. Oh, it was terrible. Okay, I'm going to hopefully everybody could see it, but if not, these guys here will see it. Not, I don't have it there, Tor. Dramatic increases by trends. Berlin is home to regional health care, retail, and institutional organizations that attract patients, customers, and employees. And all of these people contribute to our vibrant community and enjoy everything it has to offer. As our town continues to thrive, so does demand on our roads, water supply, and sewer systems. Unfortunately, the responsibility to maintain these vital resources falls mainly on Berlin property owners' shoulders. The town of Berlin is committed to supporting its residents and maintaining infrastructure. To achieve this delicate balance, we are introducing a solution, the 1% local options tax. This fund is a good way we can come together to invest in the future of Berlin. It also helps Berlin taxpayers by sharing some of the burden with those who visit our town every day. Together, let's build a stronger, more sustainable Berlin. Support the 1% local options tax and invest in the future of the town of Berlin.
Echo, echo, echo. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it on. Just so, on the... so is there one with interviews too? Oh. <laughs> All right, I think that goes gone. Who was that, Carolyn? I didn't you do one with interviews? Or? There are we didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we didn't. Okay. That was good. Yeah, it was nice. Right up till you're talking about sewer and you're showing water connections. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. But can't have one without the other. No. It was a good message. Yeah, it was. It was a good, good message. And it's on our website now. It will be there, I think, by the end of the week. Wonderful. Very great. Mm -hmm. Tremendous effort. And there's, as Carla alluded to, there's some interviews with um, some constituents. Um, it's, it's, it'll be, it'll be rolling out. It'll, we're doing like we did with the two other programs that we have. We're using then social media links, TikTok, uh, Facebook, um, to then bring people to the town website to, to take a look at it. So what? We'll, We'd like folks to do when you're sharing town business is to send that link as part of your email message. Say, oh, by the way, please go to this link. And then people who could do that, you are discussing town business, even though they're not a town resident, the more buzz you can get going, the, I think the, the, the better it can be. So, so are you going to send us the link? I will. Okay. Well, has a button on, right? Power of a percent. Okay. Sorry. Our program. <laughs> it's so true. One percent will help so much. Well, the only thing I have I have found is that when we uh, some time ago when we were doing the uh, pre up to the to the uh, local options tax, I was running for office. I was going around and I was speaking of the local options tax. It never ceases to make. I mean, you just say the word. Tax and the curtains fall, and that's it. And yeah, they're 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 seeing that one percent they they that they may have to pay. They're not seeing the the hundreds of value thousands. added. Yeah, yeah the thousand. The, the, that's what our job is. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. almost like it should be local option equals opportunity yeah. for the future. Uh, I I think we should just name the capital improvement. You know. Yep. Well, any of them will work, I suppose. Okay, anything else tonight? If not, go ahead, Tor. Nothing here. Okay, I see you forgot to put down round table, but we'll live without it. Thank you, Tor. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. Tor. Good Thank job. And uh, a motion to adjourn? I make the motion to um, adjourn tonight's select board meeting. A second. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, Thank you, Aaron.